Hi everyone, this is the physics tutorial on spring controls. There are two basic types of spring controls included in the physics toolbox, the projectile or catapult and the ballista. Let's start with the catapult first. The first thing you'll probably want to do with the catapult control is press the shoot button, which will basically initiate the launch of the catapult. Because it's powered by a spring constraint type, the catapult will bounce around a bit afterward. You can press the load button at any time to bring the catapult back to its initial launch position. You can also adjust the force slider to determine how strong the launch is. The angle determines how far the catapult can rotate from its initial launch position. If you set this to a negative value, the catapult will spring backwards. In this case, the projectile dummy isn't far enough away from the infinite plane. If I bring the dummy up a bit, you can see the full result with a negative value. Setting the angle to a low value will restrict the launch of the catapult to that angle, where putting it a little above or below 90 degrees will cause it to spring all the way to almost 180 degrees because of momentum. In the advanced panel, I can set the auto reload so I don't need to press the load button. And there is also the reload time slider, which will simply extend the time that the catapult spends reloading. If I increase the delay for auto button, then the control will add in a slight delay before the automatic reload, which allows the catapult to bounce around a little more. Okay, the next thing I'll do is add in some ammunition in the form of this sphere here. I'll quickly resize it and get it into position on my catapult first. Once I've done that, I need to make sure that I activate the physics for it and assign a spherical mesh as well. When I try to launch though, you'll see the ball will simply fall to the ground. This is because I'm currently in real-time playback, and the fast speed of the launch is too fast to be calculated correctly in this mode. I'll switch it over to frame by frame, and you'll see the ball launch properly this time. Now if you take a look at the content manager, you'll notice that the catapult consists of a subprop here. If I click on it, you'll see that it's a little piece that I can move around. The function of this little holder is to determine the trajectory of your ammo prop. Notice that if I raise my holder, the ball will be thrown more directly to the ground, because the holder helps guide the direction. I can adjust it according to my preference. Now if I want to adjust the springing effect of my catapult after its initial launch, I can select my dummy and go into its constraint settings. Here I can adjust the damping on my spring, which will shorten the length of the springing motion. Note that this may also affect the trajectory of your ammo prop as well. Adjusting the spring value won't have any effect, as this is determined by the control panel. The value will just set back to the default. It's also easy to attach an actual catapult prop to your physics dummy, as long as your prop is made of separate movable parts. Now this particular prop includes a base and wheel structure, which provides mobility to my catapult so it can move around and turn. We'll ignore this part of the structure for the purposes of this tutorial, and instead focus on the catapult hierarchy itself. If you take a look at the hierarchy in the content manager, you'll see that there is a wooden shaft that is the subprop of my projectile dummy. These attachments are all made via the modify panel to the right, as you can see here. If I detach my shaft from the catapult dummy, the catapult will still launch, but the shaft will now stay behind. I can simply reattach it using the same attach function as before. Okay, so for the ballista, I'm going to demonstrate a sort of jack-in-the-box structure here. First, I'm going to set up the physics values of my two props. I want them both to be assigned dynamic values, with the sphere assigned a sphere mesh, and the box assigned a self mesh so it can contain the sphere. Once that's done, I'll simply add in my ballista control here. 
I then want to go into the advanced panel and make sure to select my sphere as the affected prop. Once I play back, you'll see the springing effect, only it's in the wrong direction initially. I can fix this by going into the advanced panel and selecting the Z axis, as I want my prop to essentially spring upwards. Now the result is a bit better. And just like with the catapult, I can adjust the force level as well. In the advanced panel, the ballista has the same options that I demonstrated in the catapult section of this tutorial. You can adjust these to your preference, just like with the catapult. Now if I want the actual box to go along with my bouncing sphere, just like a real jack-in-the-box, I can go into the constraint settings and change the target of the assigned spring constraint from the world to the box. You'll see now that my box will follow the initial springing action upward and fall back to the ground. I can adjust the range and force of the springing action using the control panel settings. If I want the box to be less affected by the initial spring though, I can adjust its mass in the physics properties window. If I adjust it to 5 for example, this will be the result. A value of 2 will allow it to boost up a bit more. And a value of 10 will cause hardly any upward motion for the box itself, even if I increase the force, in turn restricting the height the ball can travel according to the rest of the world. Lastly, if I want my dummy to disappear and not contain any animation data, I can simply right click on it and select remove all animation. I can also open the physics panel and deactivate the physics to avoid any unwanted collisions with other objects. I can then press Ctrl D to toggle the dummy visibility off. And that's the finished result. Again, if I want more detailed calculations, I can turn on the frame by frame playback to see a slightly different result.